so welcome back to the part four of this uh, housing price prediction series and in the last part in three uh, what we have seen is uh, we tried to solve a ANOVA method by hand uh, which basically means uh, we want to find a correlation between a categorical uh, column uh, compared to a continuous variable which is sales price for our case but before we can start implementing um, ANOVA method on categorical data uh, we have to conduct few other activities uh, right uh, for example we have a lot of missing values which we need to remove for an example and we will also see there are many other data which looks numerical but they are categorical uh, in nature so we will convert them to categorical first and also we will see few other basic activities in part 4 okay so we have heard uh, many times that uh, the as the property goes uh, older uh, the price actually goes down now is it really a fact or is there actually a trend in that uh, let's first uh, you know look into that uh, question so how can we do that is for that we will be using import matplotlib dot by plot as plt and we will be plotting a graph within the Jupyter notebook so we'll be just using this inline command right now what we are planning to see is we are going to take the train data set yeah and then we are going to group by uh, based on the year sold which is one of the column and we want to see also by the month sold yeah and we are going to count you know the property by year and by sold and we are going to uh, plot kind is equal to a bar and we are going to say a figure size is equal to 14 comma 4 now this is the group by result and then we are going to put a title for example we'll say when was the property sold yeah and then we'll say plt dot show let's run it and see what it comes up with okay interesting so we see a interesting trend here so if you notice around june and july of every year the sale price or you can say the proper number of property which is sold uh, it goes up mostly around june and july uh, quite an interesting you know pattern which we will explore later in this um, series uh, but then keep let's keep in mind that you know we have to do an analysis on this as well all right so the next thing uh, that is very common while purchasing a property is uh, to find out where exactly the property is located right uh, I'll be writing exactly similar code what I have done for the uh, year sold and month sold uh, we are going to use exactly similar lines of code that's why I've already written it um, to find out where exactly are these properties uh, situated right so if I just run it okay uh, it shows that the, around the North Ames area and the the College Creek area uh, majority of the properties are uh, located in this place so it would be also interesting to see you know whether the price is high or low for these areas that's another analysis that we have to do okay so the next thing um, that uh, I would like to see is how my uh, numerical features are distributed also of course I would like to see how my categorical data is also distributed but first uh, let's focus only on the numerical features uh, and uh, how to do that is by using a melt method uh, through which I can actually plot each and every features and also their distribution now let's also see whether that distribution plot is also able to tell us some additional information so for that first we'll run it okay it does take it does take a little bit of time because it is trying to plot uh, many combinations of graph okay uh, wow so we have so many plots at the same time uh, but what exactly are we trying to find from this uh, graph or this distributions okay um, 
first one is uh, look at this graph here which is for the first floor square feet uh, see it looks very similar to like a positive skewed or right skewed uh, remember we did a similar analysis for the sale price where the majority of the uh, ha, uh, you know, sale price is towards the lower value and similarly for the first floor square feet we see uh, majority of the house have lower uh, uh, value for the first floor square feet um, similarly what else uh, can we see of course that is not the only field which is this positive skewed Okay, so we also see that for um, garage area, we have uh, a positive skewed um, distribution as well. And, uh, you know, also for the lot area, we see that um, it is again positive skewed. And so that means majority of the uh, distribution falls either on the left or on the right, right? So that's when we say it's a skewed distribution. Okay, so what else do we see here? So we can see that, you know, uh, it, this distribution are meant to be continuous but then we see this long bars here what does it mean uh, we can see it here in the lot frontage uh, we can see it in the pool area you know a lot of bars and we can also see it in the total uh, RMS above ground uh, we can see it in the years old yeah we have bars it means that even though they are numerical feature but then uh, they are not continuous value that means they are discrete values right uh, again similarly if you look at the overall quality uh, column if, again this is uh, a continue this is not a continuous value so it has a value from 0 to 10 right but then it's of course a numerical feature but then it doesn't behave like one it's more similar to categorical feature so these are the few things uh, columns we will try to convert from back from numerical to categorical okay okay so as a first step what we are going to do is we are going to take the ms subclass the month sold and the year sold and just convert them into string and it's very simple just by using the apply method we can do that and what we're basically doing is converting the uh, numerical feature into categorical features okay uh, because as we have seen in the above plots uh, this actually do contain numerical feature but then the, they should be treated as a categorical data not numerical data okay so now that we have converted three features uh, from numerical to categorical so uh, always you know it's a good practice to make sure that how many columns are numerical or how many columns are uh, categorical so we'll just run this uh, uh, command again to keep a track of that um, of course I'm doing it manually here for the demonstration purpose but you can of course uh, put this three lines of code inside a function and call it every time uh, whenever you need to right uh, so remember uh, before we uh, before it was uh, around uh, 14 um, three categorical features and there were 38 numerical features but now that we have converted three numerical features into categorical so we have three less so that's why we have 35 numerical and 46 categorical features okay so we will do one last thing for this part of the video uh, we are going to plot the count of categorical features because for numerical features we can plot a continuous value and a distribution but in case of categorical features we have to plot the count right because it doesn't have continuous values so again uh, the plotting uh, script is exactly similar to what we have done for the numerical features so let's go ahead and run this and see uh, what we find okay for the time being we can ignore this uh, uh, warnings uh, similarly it takes little bit of time uh, uh, okay we got it so uh, we see the count of each uh, categorical features and their values yeah and we can see the basement conditions as a categorical feature uh, we have the basement quality and so on the electrical and so on the condition one and so on uh, so what we will do is we'll do the analysis of uh, this particular graphs uh, in our next tutorial till then have a great day and keep practicing